Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about transcoding again but I want to talk about the difference between software transcoding and hardware transcoding because they really aren't the same thing so let's get started. Okay so you bought yourself your first NAS and you've set it up so you could use it for Plex to be used as a PMS, a Plex Media Server. Not just in Plex but also outside of Plex you've got native transcoding with first party apps like uh, DS video for Synology or Video Station for QNAP. All these different applications give you the ability to watch your media both via your network and the internet. But often the video files or indeed music and pictures but predominantly video files that you're trying to access are either not compatible with the connected device so it's an iPad, a little Android tablet, your phone, a laptop something or even a TV that's a little bit old. For some reason or another the media files you're trying to access are either not a supported codec that you want to, uh, the, the TV or whatever can support or they're a resolution that doesn't play back on your destination device or quite simply the file is either too big um, or uh, the bitrate is wrong and un incompatible with your destination device because the last thing you want to do is watch some 50 gig 4k file on your iPhone 3. You're not going to be able to see, you know, you're not going to appreciate the sheer depth of focus and field on this tiny little screen and what you want to do is change that file for one reason or another to a more, uh, to a more acceptable format on the destination device, the client device, so to speak. That's the one accessing. That's where transcoding comes in. Now, we already did a video about what exactly transcoding is. But one thing we didn't touch on, a number of you said, was what's the difference between software transcoding and hardware transcoding? Because a number of you out there using applications like Plex notice that there's an option, option for HW transcoding or hardware transcoding. It gives you the ability with a drop down to transcode things for speed, um, transcode things for picture quality or another option that says make my CPU hurt and what that means is to give you the best possible output uh, you know for, for your client device now transcoding is when the NAS will change a file to a better format for the dest destination device that gives you the best output possible on that device now the way things transcode is the CPU starts changing and altering the file and then sending it to you this is called on the fly transcoding. There's also offline transcoding where it's done in advance, but we're not going to talk about that. Now, if your CPU and your NAS supports hardware transcoding, that means that the software in question, whether it's a first party app like Synology or QNAP's own applications, or a third party app like MB or Plex, hardware transcoding um, is when that software can utilize the rendering and the graphical portion of that CPU, the transcoding engine, and therefore get that file altered with that part of the CPU. The result is that far less CPU power is used. And the less CPU power that's used, the more transcoding that can happen. So other users that are connected can get their files transcoded as well. Or the files can be, tra um, other things can be done with the NAS and the overall system performance won't be affected. So if you're utilizing the NAS, such as the 918 Plus with hardware transcoding enabled, so you do need a Plex Pass for that. If you have your files being transcoded uh, with a transcoding engine, the hardware transcoding, the result will be that the NAS performance will be much better for everyone else accessing it, whether they're using it for surveillance, virtualization, or transcoding files too, because hardware transcoding utilizes far less of that CPU, 20 to 30% overall on average. Now, software transcoding is when the software in question, again, Synology or QNAP Zone, or uh, someone's like Plex, cannot access the transcoding engine on the CPU or the CPU doesn't have a transcoding engine at all. The result is that software transcoding, that is the software making the CPU work for it, does the transcoding and the result will be that your CPU usage will leap up to 70 or 80% CPU use on average to transcode with software transcoding. The result of course is that while this one file is being transcoded while being sent to your device such as a smartphone if that when that file is being sent so much hardware on the NAS is being used it leaves very little system resource for other users or if they are already using the CPU the result will be that the transcoding will be stuttering or even worse will not transcode at all so in an ideal world what you want is hardware transcoding not software transcoding but remember some CPUs inside NAS do not support this. Some CPUs inside NAS support it, but only for first-person applications. Again, Synology and QNAP's own video player apps, or 
Some CPUs will let Plex and MB and third party applications use that rendering engine, that hardware transcoding, but they will only let you use it on premium packages and Plex is a classic example of that. If you want to utilize hardware transcoding, you need to use um, a Plex Pass, that's their paid for subscription service, and they will let you have hardware transcoding on the NAS. So do bear that in mind. And if you want to learn more about Plex NASs, um, hardware transcoding and software transcoding, and find out what's the right NAS for you, go to the descri description below and check out my article on NAS Compares to tell you more about this capability. If you've enjoyed this video or found it helpful, then do don't, don't forget to click like and subscribe there at the bottom. And finally, do check out my other videos on NASs that are ideal for Plex. I've got a whole series coming up on the best Plex NAS from Netgear, Asus Store, and of course, Synology and QNAP. So do check those out. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching.